I walked out of my office, I heard some popping noises, I walked into the commons, and I walked right into a school shooting. It was the last day of school for uh, seniors, um, and so we, we thought something was a senior prank, and it ended up being um, uh, a person had two guns, and he's unloading the gun. The person was jumping around with a rifle, and he was shooting. People were screaming. I saw some blood on the floor. Shooting at a group of students. So you end up shooting five people that day. Everybody was panicking. We didn't know what to do. I went back to my office, and then my coworker, he came up and he said, he started going out there. And I said, look, man, he's got a gun. But he went, he went out there. I know what guns can do, so I felt like I needed to go out there too, because I know if they have a gun and I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But I went out there. The shooter had went outside. I saw a holster of a pistol, so now this is a second gun. I had to go around the corner of the wall. I had no idea what I was going to find, whether my friend was dead, whether students dead, administrators or whatever, I had no idea, or where that guy was waiting on me. But I walked around there, and thank God, one of our administrators, I talked a kid down, I got the gun from him, and then the police came, slammed me down on the ground, whatever. But that entire day, when the, when the news people were there, the helicopters, the light, we had a light fly out of student. It felt unbelievable. It's the first time I really knew what the word surreal means. It was like, it's just totally a different feeling than anything else you could feel. I'll never forget that day, and it was due to bullying. The person who, did, who was bullied, they just got out of jail recently. They were in jail for 18 years. Students need to realize how important the repercussions of bullying are. I'm just a school counselor. I can remember this from 20 years ago. Certain things will trigger it, and I think about it. I don't really believe I have PTSD, but I, I remember that day vividly. And I know the students who were injured, they definitely remember it. And years later, it still not just affects me, but it affects everyone in that community. Where if someone had reached out before, those things can, can be prevented. And, and I think so many times I've seen little things, if someone come up and say something little, well, then it never gets to be big. And, uh, that one, it's hard to be much bigger than that. So please, be aware that there are very severe consequences that can come from bullying. I just hope that students realize that this doesn't just happen on TV. It happens in real life. You have to be very careful of what you post online and how you treat people. We don't know what can come of that. And here I am 20 years later still thinking about it. High school is a trying time for young adults. And during this time, many events take place that can shape their future. 
As a result, the students have to be careful about their environment more than ever before, especially now that modern technology has changed the way we communicate with one another. We have a nationwide epidemic on our hands. 68% of teens agree that cyberbullying is a serious problem. Nearly 43% of teens have been bullied online. More than four out of 10 have said it has happened to them more than once. 90% of teens who have seen cyberbullying online have ignored it. 81% of teens think it's easier to get away with bullying online than it is to do in person. About one in five teens have posted or sent sexually suggestive photographs of themselves to others. Only 10% of victims will inform a parent or trusted adult of their abuse. Less than 20% cyberbullying incidents are reported to law enforcement. What is a bully? A bully is someone who, in their own insecurities, attacks another individual and projects those insecurities on that person, either by physical violence or by words of hurt and harm. A cyberbully is someone who attacks another individual with the intent to cause emotional distraught, whether it be by words that they've said, either by pictures they've sent, or even by videos. Their intent is to cause harm, emotional harm, that can have mental anguish on that individual. Social media impacts the lives of many people. In the school environment, social media creates conflict that disrupts the daily instructional time from teachers and prevents the student's ability to focus on learning. citations and evidence. We're going to go back and take another look at it because we're not getting some specific examples like we need for our essay. So go ahead and put on this title for this one your last name and the word evidence. What we're going to do is we're going to go searching for specific texts that have Brad Murray's use of the animal as a metaphor for the book. Sounds good. Sounds good. How about you? Pretty good. Do you want to go out to eat later? Well I have track practice. We'll go after that. Okay. These are my friends. Today, Youth feel a lot more comfortable putting posts on social media where they believe that they are anonymous instead of communicating face to face. Internet communications or communications through apps such as Facebook, Instagram, Kix, Snapchat, or Lipsy are not truly anonymous. You might think they're anonymous, but they're not. This information is stored on electronic servers and that can be retrieved in the course of a legal investigation. When you post hurtful words on a social media platform, and others read it, it causes the person that you sent the post to to feel inferior. That's why it is important to remember that words can hurt people's feelings. There is power in spoken words. There's a lot of times as a law enforcement officer we get asked by parents or sometimes by students in regards to messages that are being sent, whether it's through Facebook, through Instagram, or through some of these anonymous apps, if they should save the messages and just keep them in a file, whether it's on a computer or somewhere, Yes, you can save those messages. You can screenshot them, keep them in a folder on your computer because that information can be useful for us down the road. Hiding behind a cell phone camera, hiding behind a, a computer, hiding behind an online program, using that to benefit your cause and hurt somebody else is not gonna be tolerated. That's a violation of law and we're not gonna put up with it. When you do something online or on a computer or on a phone, picture or a text or something to that effect that's sent, transmitted, saved or whatever, it don't go away. We can get it. We can find it. It may take us a minute and then we have to jump through certain legal hoops to do so, but it's there and it's not going away. Well, number one, everybody needs to understand that when you say anonymous, you might just supplant that word with cowardice. You know, somebody doesn't have enough merit or inner uh, sustainability, however you want to say it, to actually face somebody and tell them why they have a problem with somebody and they want to cower and hide behind this anonymous kind of deal, uh, speaks about the character of the person sending that. They're not much of a person and ultimately, when you have that kind of uh, inner sense of worth, 
that you realize I got to be a coward to do this. And I'm also hurting somebody. Uh, that's got to eat away at your character over time. If you question whether what you're doing is right or wrong or it dawns on you, maybe this is wrong or something, use a simple test. Can I go to my mama, my daddy, my preacher, my teacher, my coach, anybody I really respect, and say, I'm about to say this on the internet. Is, do you think that's okay? Uh, if you say to yourself, well, I could never do that. Forget that. Uh, I need to hide on this. Then I, that's your answer right there. It's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. You should put nothing on the internet that you're not comfortable with your parents and your teachers and anybody seeing. Because if you can't show it to them, it means it's negative. It's against mores. It's against the law, maybe. And you're just a coward. Uh, that's just the bottom line that you can't avoid. So what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be a person helping other people? Or do you want to be a person that's a coward that's stabbing people in the back and just hurting them? Because you've got to ask those kind of questions of yourself, of what you want to be in life. Because I don't look out there and see a lot of people who want to hurt other people and want to be negative to other people that make it far in life. Yet they're the ones that are always whining and complaining because they don't ever seem to get ahead and they can't figure it out. So if you talk about someone behind their back, it spreads like wildfire, and that's how fights start. People then post to social media about how they will handle the problem. But these conflicts almost never remain between two parties, whether it's between a girlfriend and boyfriend, between two friends, or even two classmates. Conflict starts by failing to communicate effectively. So instead of facing your problem head on, by listening to one another, resolving to de-escalate an argument, Students are choosing to hurt one another in ways that will have lasting consequences. The guy that played Wolverine. Did you guys see Emmeline's story? Mm -hmm. You didn't see it? No. Well, apparently, someone caught her cheating on her boyfriend, and they exposed her. Oh, that? Isn't that getting a little out of hand? I don't think so. What do you mean? What if I just said, hypothetically, that I started this? I mean, that wouldn't be good. Why? I think it's great. But it's not true. You don't know that. You don't know her. But I, I do, and that's not true. You don't know it for a fact. Come on. It's just a harmless little joke. But you can literally ruin her reputation by that. Since when do I care? That's the point, you don't. I mean, come on, look at her. There's nothing wrong with her. Everything's wrong with her. Maybe everything's wrong with you. Again. Since when do I care? Maybe you should start caring. I think you should, though. It might be best for you. So, those rumors, the habit being spread, I found out he was spreading them. Who was it? It's Lainey. Why? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know I don't. Yes. You do! No, I don't. You're lying! You're just lying to get attention. That's all you want is attention. One of the things I tell all the officers at the police department is whenever you make a decision, Make sure if you're angry, don't make a decision right then. Take that little bit of a time to calm down, think about what's going on, and then make a decision, and then act on that decision. Anytime you act on something while your emotions are out of control, it's gonna be a mistake, and it's probably gonna be a big mistake. One, it's gonna be costly, whether it may be costly financially, uh, physically, emotionally, or even administratively. Why would you send that? <laughs> I didn't think she was going to say it. Dude, check this out. Did she cheat on me? Dude. I'm, I'm not worried about it. 
But you know how he is, dude. Dude, but at the end of the day, it's not true, so why stress over it? He's not gonna go for that. You know he got anger issues. Dude, if he's my true friend, he's gonna know if it's real. All right, bro. You know your girlfriend, my girlfriend, bro. I'm not. 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 I'm not.
But the reality is, these crimes are serious, and not only are they exposing themselves to criminal prosecution, they may also have to face civil liability. One who's been defamed can file a lawsuit for defamation of character. Students need to understand that the repercussions of their actions not only affect themselves and those who are responsible for their well-being, but can also affect the families of everyone involved. Parents and guardians have to deal with the consequences of their children's actions. The embarrassment, pain, and shame that results from online harassment, threats, and bullying can be devastating to a family. If a person makes a threat to harm someone on social media, then once you post it, you can't take it back. out there that find themselves on the side of being a bully, I caution you on the words that you use and the potential and the magnitude of the damage it may cause to other individuals. You never know when the words you speak could cause someone to take it to the extreme and end up taking their own lives. Communication is always the key. It's always letting everybody know and I tell everybody in my courtroom, every act you do is either wrong or right. And if you're going to be doing the wrong act, you're going to get caught and you're going to be held responsible by the court system. Uh, it doesn't do any good to come up to my court and start talking about how uh, you've got a future plan and how you want to do things in the future and how you really don't want this to have much impact upon you because you're really concerned about you because I look at every defendant and say, who do you think the court system is worried about is number one, you the defendant or the victim? Because uh, I can tell you right now, I'm worried about the victim's protection. I'm worried about society's protection. You're like number three on that list. So I'm not going to worry about you. You made your choices. There's not a single person that wakes up every morning and says to themselves, you know, I think I'll be a victim today. Uh, not a single person. And yet every person who's cyber bullies, every person who's a criminal, every person who's going to do wrong does do that. They wake up that day and they say, I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to normally do wrong because I want to. Well, the court system doesn't fall down on that side of that defendant. It's always going to fall down on the side of the victim. To the victim of bullying, I encourage you to reach out to someone you trust that you can confide in that can help you process through this situation. You do not have to go about this alone. There's many out there who have experienced something similar to what you've gone through. And my office has victim advocates that are here to help you. Sometimes victims are reluctant to come forward and that's because it's embarrassing. Maybe the subject matter of the text or the tweet or the communication is something that the victim is not proud of. But that shouldn't stop a victim from reporting this crime. You're not alone. It's important to understand that, and it's important to understand that those who conduct this cyberbullying should be held accountable. If left unchecked, they might do it again, and it might be worse the next time. Unfortunately, with teens and young people, they're more into peer pressure. They care more about what other people think of them than they do about what they think of themselves. They are afraid of their image to other people in the group that they want to impress forming the cliques that they want to form that itself will lead to bullying, either cyberbullying or just regular bullying, because the mentality of a wolf pack is they attack in mass. Because I come from training dogs and studying dog behavior and wolves, so you ever watch, you never see one wolf go attack another alone. You usually see them as a pack. Same thing with bullies. Why? It's because they're insecure and because they're just as scared. So the problem with bullies is they have their own insecurities. Sometimes they're missing something, whether it's at home. So the way they feel better is they come and they find somebody else to pick on because maybe they're being bullied at home. So maybe they're missing someone to love on them and care for them at home. And so to make themselves feel better, they come to school or they go wherever and they find somebody else that to make them feel the way they do, so they feel better about themselves. So yeah, so the, that bully, essentially, at some point is going to get caught up with the law enforcement, and they're going to get prosecuted for everything that's going on, but there's something 
real that's going on with them too. So if we could get to them before it gets to the point of, hey, we need to prosecute them and find out why are you bullying this person? What's going on with you to cause you to be that way? Then I think maybe we could stop bullying. Think of what we could be as a student body, as a society, if we would embrace one another, if we would speak words of encouragement in one another and build each other up. Think of what we could be if we took that role. When you see someone who is alone and isolated, reach out to that individual. Be the one that bridges that gap. Be the one that brings that peace and that comfort and encouragement to that person who is alone and isolated. Because today it's them, tomorrow it could be you. Online messaging. Texting. Bullying. Sexting. Threats. Harassment. These are just a few of the key actions that can cause unthinkable consequences and reactions. When we are being irresponsible with our actions, they can lead to suicide, jail time, active shooters, death. Words have power, and when they are used irresponsibly, they can lead to traumatic situations that will affect everyone around us. We have the ability to choose between what is right and what is wrong. And we, 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 we are responsible for our own actions.